Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I would like to welcome you to the Sunday Book Review. The Sunday Book Review is the series where I discuss books which impact the compliance practitioner, the legal professional, and the business professional. I hope you will enjoy this episode. The Sunday Book Review for August 8, 2021, Books with August in the Title. And we begin with what I think is one of the greatest history books of all time, The Guns of August, the Pulitzer-winning classic about the outbreak of World War I by Barbara Tuckman. In this landmark Pulitzer Prize-winning edition, Tuckman recreates the first month of World War I, the 30 days in the summer of 1914, that determine the course of the conflict, the century, and ultimately our present world. Beginning with the funeral of Edward VII, Tuckman traces each step that led to the inevitable clash. And inevitable it was, with all sides plotting their war for a generation. Dizzyingly comprehensive and spectacularly portrayed with her famous talent for evoking the character's key players, Tuckman's magnum opus is a classic for the ages. Next up, Light in August by William Faulkner. Read, read, read. Read everything. Trash, classics, good and bad, and see how they do it. Just like a carpenter who works as an apprentice and studies the master. Read, then write. That's what William Faulkner said about his book, Light in August. It's a novel about hopeful perseverance in the face of mortality, featuring some of Faulkner's most Memorable characters, godless, dauntless Lena Grove in search of the father of her unborn child, Reverend Gail Hightower, who's plagued by visions of Confederate horsemen, Joe Christmas, a desperate, enigmatic drifter consumed by his mixed ancestry. It's a great introduction to Faulkner. I can't pretend to say it's an easy read, but none of Faulkner is an easy read, but you'll be enriched and, frankly, a better person for reading Faulkner. Next up, we go in a little bit different direction with Krakatawa, The Day the World Exploded, August 27th, 1883. The legendary annihilation of the volcano island of Krakatoa, the name has since become a byword for cataclysmic disaster, followed by the immense tsunami that killed nearly 4,000, 40,000 people. Beyond purely the physical horrors of the event, that not only recently have been properly understood, the eruption changed the world in more ways than can possibly be imagined. Dust swirled around the planet for years, causing temperatures to plummet and sunsets to turn vivid with lurid and unsettling displays of lights. The effects were immense, as felt as far away as France. Barometers in Bogota and Washington, D.C. went haywire. Bodies were washed up in Zanzibar in Africa. The sound of the island's destruction was heard in Australia and India and on islands thousands of miles away. Most significant of all, in view of today's climate change, the eruption helped trigger in Java a wave of murderous anti-Western militancy among fundamentalist Muslims, one of the first outbreaks of Islamic-inspired killing. And our final book is Tea House of the August Moon, This is where American-style democracy and capitalism come to the sleepy village of Tubiki in an uplifting comedy of cultural conflict set on Okinawa at the end of World War II. The hapless Captain Fisby is implementing America's Plan B, establishing a woman's league for democratic action. When Fisby mistakenly accepts the gifts of souvenirs from two geishas, life in a village and his plans for it spin out of control. It's a great story of not so so much the ugly American, but the inept American abroad. I know you will find it hilarious. If you work in compliance or internal controls, Enron was one of the most seminal events for you. Check out Lauren Siegel's episode this month on the Ethics and Compliance Library, where she interviews a co-author of The Smartest Guys in the Room, and Enron whistleblower Sharon Watkins. It's a great episode. One of the most ubiquitous terms we've heard of in 2021 is ESG. I recently premiered the ESG report, where I take a look at ESG, slice it and dice it in multiple different ways, but primarily from the angle of the compliance professional and the compliance perspective. 
So check out the ESG report on the Compliance Podcast Network. Finally, on Compliance Man, this season, we're looking at the questions of true or false as Tim Basinov, Katarov, and I pose a question and ask whether it's true or false. The Compliance Man brings the perspective of the compliance professional in emerging markets. Check it out.